Well, hello and welcome and thank you for joining us wherever you're coming from, whenever you're watching this for this week's Wednesday worship here at SPSJ in Hereford on Wednesday the 10th of March. This will be going out live and this week so much has been going on and uh, the children have gone back to school this week. The first steps back to normality uh, as some people have begun to call that. Uh, but it's really, really great to come together now today uh, to worship together. At the end of our time this morning today, uh, we'll have any notices and things that we need to share. Um, but before we do all of that, uh, we're going to be hearing from our friend Paul, who's going to be speaking to us. Uh, Liz is going to be leading us in our prayers and we're going to have a time of sung worship. Um, I'm just going to read one of the two passages that Paul might be referring to later on. Uh, this comes from the beginning verses of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 and verses 5 to 9, following on from that. So here, here we are with our first Bible reading. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip, slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's just start our time together in prayer and then we'll go into some sung worship. Father God, we thank you for your word for the laws that it contains, the guidelines, the guidance uh, for us in so many ways. And we thank you for the way that you uh, invite us to hear your word and to follow you. And we pray that we would hold those things close to our hearts today, that we would live them out in our lives and that we would share them with our families, our children, our loved ones, our neighbours, our colleagues, those we the way those we care for and those who care for us. We ask these things in your great name and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So now let's worship God together.
So now, just before we hear from Paul, I'm going to share with you our second Bible reading. This comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, where we find the Sermon on the Mount uh, and the Beatitudes. Some great stuff in there. But this passage is verses 17 to 20. I'll just share these words of Jesus with you now. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfil them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to hand over to Paul to share some thoughts and reflections and help us think through what those words mean. And then following on from that, uh, our prayers this week will be led by Liz uh, and then we'll have uh, our final song before uh, the end of the service. Okay, over to you, Paul. Good morning. I was driving down Whitecross Road one day and glanced in my rear view mirror and I noticed that two cars back there was a police car. My immediate response was to check that I was driving within the speed limit. And it turned out that I was on that occasion. The law says that the speed limit on that stretch of road is 30 miles per per hour. So I'm constrained by the law to drive within the speed limit. And if I don't, I could easily end up with a fine and points on my licence. If you read the Hereford Times each week, There's always several people who have been uh, fined or whatever for traffic violations. So imagine the mayhem that would take place if there was no speed limit or other laws to keep order in society. It would be like the Wild West out there. We would hardly dare to step outside our front door. And on occasions when law, the law has broken down in human society, there's been looting and arson and assault and murder and chaos. In our reading from Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfil them. In other words, He had a very high regard for the law. And Jesus' reference uh, to the law is the law given to Moses on Mount Sinai in the form of the Ten Commandments. And we can read about it in the book of Exodus, chapter 34. On the other hand, Jesus and his disciples were constantly being criticised and got at for breaking what was called the tradition of the elders. For example, a few weeks ago we had a reading at one of our Wednesday services from Matthew chapter 15. 
and we find Jesus and his disciples walking through a field of corn and they plucked some heads off, uh, rubbed them in their hands, extracted the seeds and ate them. And these uh, critics said, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. In Jesus' day, the Jewish leaders meant several things when they referred to the law. Uh, one was a reference to the Ten Commandments, which as we've seen were given to Moses as we find in Exodus chapter 34. The other thing they meant was the Torah, the fir first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number and Deuteronomy. And the Torah means, the word means teaching. Or thirdly, there was the law and the prophets, the whole Old Testament scripture. Or fourthly, there was the oral or scribal law. And the criticism of Jesus and his disciples in the Gospels by the Pharisees, scribes and teachers of the law refer almost exclusively to the oral scribal law. The Jewish authorities had come to believe that out of the Ten Commandments it was possible to find a regulation or a rule for every conceivable circumstances that might arise in everyday life. And so the scribes and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law made it their business to deduce from the great principles of the Ten Commandments literally thousands and thousands of rules and regulations. For example, on one occasion Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath and he was criticised for it. Because these made-up rules and regulations added to the law, class healing on the Sabbath as work, it was only allowed if there was a danger to life. When Jesus healed a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath, the man's uh, life was not in danger. It had probably been withered for years, maybe even perhaps from his, his birth. And the Pharisees, the Gospel says, the Pharisees looking to accuse Jesus asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Instead of recognising the sign of healing as a sign of the kingdom of God and a sign of who Jesus were, was, they started complaining according to one of the rules and regulations that had been added to the law. About 65 years ago, I went to a Sunday school one Sunday afternoon and something occurred that um, I remember. I'm not quite sure why I remember it. I was only about 10. But I recall the Sunday school teacher saying, we should not use public transport on a Sunday. We lived in a village that was relatively isolated in those days, and you couldn't go anywhere without using public transport. Very few people in the village had cars. In fact, I can remember the first car in our street. As it turned out, it was one of our neighbours, next door neighbours. He had been promoted at work and his promotion included the provision of a vehicle so he could get out and about to do his business. I remember when it first drove down, he first drove it down our street, we all went out and stood around to admire it. And then a few drops of rain fell and he dashed in, opened the garage door and put his car inside uh, as he did every time it rained and then wiped it down with the cloth. When the Sunday school teacher said we should not use public transport on a Sunday, I remember thinking, it's okay for you, 
your husband drives a car. I was far too shy, shy to say it out loud. Uh, in those days, you didn't contradict the Sunday school teacher. But this was one of the thousands of rules and regulations that has filtered down through to the 20th century and was thought at the time by the Sunday school teacher to be implicit in the law of God, the Ten Commandments. But as far as I know, the Ten Commandments have got nothing to say about the use of public transport, whether it's by car, donkey, camel or aeroplane. The law of God has got nothing to say about the religious ritual of hand washing before you eat something when you're walking through a field or wherever you might be. I mean, it is usually a good idea to wash our hands before we eat, but that is a separate issue. So when Jesus speaks of keeping the law, he's referring to the broad sweep of the Ten Commandments. He's not referring to the burdensome nitpicking rules and regulations that have been added to it in every generation uh, in, and imposed on people, trapping them in a miasma of stuff. That has got nothing to do with the law of God, nor the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Now we know that the essence of the law is to love God with all our heart, mind, soul and strength and to love our neighbour as ourselves. A bishop in the early church summed it up when he said, love God and do what you want. In other words, if we truly love God, our whole life will flow from that inner love rather than our whole life being constrained by petty rules and regulations. So love God and motivated by that love, do what you want. Amen. Let us pray. In times of trouble, it's hard to know how to pray. For those times, here is a prayer based on Romans 8, verse 34. Holy Spirit, when I feel alone, I am comforted because you pray with me. When I am silenced by suffering, I am grateful that you pray through me. And Jesus, when I feel helpless, I am strengthened because you're with the Father right now, praying for me. Lord, we call on you, knowing that you are near, knowing that you walk beside us in the good times and the bad. You know our every need, even before we ask. Father God, Hear us now as we come to you in prayer. We pray for the world, and especially for those places where there is fighting and hardship. We pray for Senegal, Yemen, Myanmar. We pray, Lord, that you would protect and support those living in migrant detention centres in countries around the world. We pray for those suffering due to the devastation caused by explosions in Equatorial Guinea last Sunday. Loving Father, there are so many areas where your light appears to have been extinguished, not only abroad, but also in our own country. Bring hope and encouragement, we pray, to all those suffering in these dark places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders and for our church leaders, for our archbishops of Canterbury and York, and for our own bishops and clergy. 
we ask that you would grant them wisdom and understanding, humility and insight. We pray for all clergy families everywhere, especially those who are struggling with the heavy demands of work and family. In their busyness, we pray that they will find time for stillness and peace. As the deer pants for streams of water, so may their souls thirst for the living God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the continuing vaccination programme in this country and we pray that vaccines will be distributed fairly throughout the world. We give thanks for all those key workers who take daily risks in order to carry out important and vital tasks. Especially, we pray for those healthcare workers who continue to care for the sick whilst suffering with their own mental and physical health. Surround them with your love, Lord, and when their own strength fails, may they be supported by your supernatural strength and your everlasting arms beneath them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hold us when we stumble, and when we fall, lift us up and give us hope. We pray for all those who are suffering, especially those known to us, whether in body, mind or spirit. May your love and your truth always protect them. Raise them up from the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, and set their feet on a rock. Give them, we pray, a firm place to stand, and put a new song in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, guide us in the week ahead, we pray. May we not be constrained by petty rules and regulations, but rather may your love and your presence in us motivate us to do your will. Lord, in these days of mercy, Make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen.
Well, thanks again for having joined us for our time of worship this week. I hope wherever you are, you've found this to be helpful, uh, challenging, I'm sure, but also helpful for you in your walk, in your life, as you think about what it means to discover and be discovered by Jesus and to follow him and be called by him. Uh, just a few things to share with folk. Uh, if you're on our uh, weekly uh, mailing list, you'll hopefully have received an email bulletin or, or through your door by now. Um, just a couple of things to remind you of. Uh, this Saturday um, going live will be our SBSJ Kids um, re materials will be available from Saturday morning, whatever Elliot has put together. It's always a mystery and a miracle. Uh, until it happens. Uh, and then on Sunday morning, we have our online service. Church buildings are still closed at present for worship. Uh, we will be opening towards the end of this month, we hope. Uh, but this Sunday, our online service starts with coffee time at 9.30 and then the worship uh, online at 10, followed by some discussion time at 11. Uh, do join us for those if you're able to uh, online and together as, as best we can be at the moment. I'd ask you to continue to pray with us for the prayer course that we're running um, and for Alpha. If you've not been able to join either of them this time around, uh, we will be offering them again. Um, and also to ask you to pray with us for the Youth Alpha course that we're running at the Sixth Form College with students from there. Um, the live lunches continue uh, this week, today. Uh, it's a, a, an informal, just a, a chat over Zoom. Um, and then next week we have our third, uh, our third big question live lunch. We're going to be joined by Joel Harris from Kintsugi Hope, Deborah Jackson from Hereford Sixth Form College and myself and Andy Morgan. As we think through the question, uh, hidden crisis, can our young people still have a future? We're going to be thinking about mental health and resilience and supporting our young people as we talk through that. If you haven't already booked in for that, then do please do so. I'm sure the link will appear underneath me uh, as I'm talking now uh, using the Eventbrite link there. Please do book in for that. And uh, anything else that is coming up, Elliot will probably make appear around me. Uh, but as I said before, if you're not already on our weekly bulletins when you'd like to be, do please get in touch with us at the office uh, and we'll make sure you receive that each week. So now let's just finish our time together um, by praying for one another. Um, I invite you to join with me as I say the words of the grace. It's a wonderful prayer of blessing. Normally we look around the church uh, and we look at people in our, in our tradition, we eyeball one another as we pray for God's blessing on the people around us. So do please join with me as we say the words of the grace together. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in God's grace and go with God's blessing into the places that he calls you into this day and in the week to come. Amen. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye now.